Good afternoon. This is Claire Epstein and welcome to our webinar on improving incident investigations. Couple of housekeeping issues uh, before we begin. Uh, you should see a PowerPoint slide that says improving incident investigations as well as the go to webinar control panel. Uh, if you have any questions, please just use that go to webinar control panel to answer, to ask any questions and we'll be happy to ask them um, as we can throughout the webinar. Uh, in addition, this webinar is being recorded, uh, so you will receive a copy of, uh, the, of the recording um, probably in the next day or so that you can uh, be able to share with others. Uh, so with that, uh, we are about to uh, begin. Again, thank you everyone for attending our webinar. Uh, my name is Claire Epstein, um, and today we're going to talk about improving incident investigations. We are going to give you um, an introduction about who we are and the team at Vector Solutions. We're going to talk about the types of incidents uh, to investigate or what we see most commonly being investigated, uh, the steps of an investigation. Uh, some of the data analytics and trends uh, that we see when folks look at uh, investigating incidents. And then uh, Josh uh, is going to take you in and show us some of the incident investigation software tools we have here at Vector Solutions. Uh, so again, welcome everyone um, on the call. My name is uh, Claire Epstein. I'm the general manager um, of the Vector EHS software. I've been working with the Vector EHS software for uh, many years, uh, really understands uh, incident data and analytics. Um, also on the phone with us is uh, Joshua Parcelli. He is our Director of Customer Rela Relations for Vector EHS. He has, over the years, helped multiple clients uh, implement the software. Uh, it currently assists um, customers and the support team, as well as the implementation team, um, in making sure uh, the customer experience is successful. Uh, so who is Vector Solutions? Uh, so Vector Solutions uh, is industry safe, uh, used to be uh, the name of our product. We are currently rebranding as Vector EHS. So you'll uh, you will see both industry safe and Vector EHS. Uh, just letting you know that is the same uh, product. But Vector Solutions is a leading provider of, um, of, um, Sorry, just lost my chance off for a second. Leading provider of e-learning workforce and EHS management and performance improvement solutions. Uh, we have multiple locations, um, and we have over 500 team members and over 9,000 e-learning uh, and training courses. And we do operate in uh, different uh, segments. We have commercial education um, as well as public sector who use our software. Uh, Industry Safe is a safety management software. Um, as you'll see, um, it has multiple components uh, that work together uh, also with the vector suite. Uh, so we have, um, our software includes uh, data for uh, areas for incidents um, and really the whole incident life cycle, which ties in really nicely about our presentation on incident investigation today. I'll talk a lot about uh, the life cycle of an incident. Uh, we also have other components for inspections, observations, job safety analysis, uh, learning management software and training solutions, and industrial hygiene and SCS. So uh, moving on to uh, incident um, investigation, uh, we see a wide variety of different ways our uh, customers uh, report on incidents. Um, <clears throat> there is a wide variety of incidents that our customers report on. Uh, the most common uh, we see are listed here. So employee injuries, um, a lot of times the employee injury piece is wrapped up into making sure uh, there's OSHA compliance, um, and so you're recording injuries uh, for OSHA, um, as well as for workers' comp. So obviously, if you have a serious enough injury, uh, you need to report that uh, to OSHA uh, in most cases, though there are some exceptions, and then also uh, usually for, for workers' comp. There's also non-employee injuries. Uh, we see this with our customer base that may uh, be open to uh, the public um, or have visitors. Uh, so for example, in our public uh, transit clients, uh, they're always dealing with uh, passengers. They might be dealing with trespassers. Um, 
And then we also see in construction and manufacturing, a lot of times um, organizations have a heavy contractor workforce. So they want to keep track of injuries and illnesses uh, that relate to contractors. And there's lots of different ways and different models to do that, again, depending on the relationship between the contractor um, and the um, employer. Uh, they, we also see um, our, our customers keep track of environmental incidents uh, if there's a spill release. Uh, vehicle incidents uh, for our customers that have vehicle fleets, uh, security incidents um, for organizations that keep track of security. Uh, we also have seen people do quality incident and then near misses. Uh, near misses is a big one, especially for environmental health and safety professionals, uh, because the idea is that you want to keep track of things that uh, may not um, be a severe incident, uh, but could turn into one. Um, so these are the different uh, type of incidents that we see our customers use. Really, probably the biggest focus uh, for most of our customers are those employee injuries. So uh, when you have an incident that requires some investigation, uh, there are some steps you have to do uh, as you conduct that incident investigation. Um, it's pretty important, though, that you do some pre-planning uh, before you have an incident. Um, so, you know, at most organizations, at most times, uh, you will at some point have an incident. So it is good to know um, what your incident investigation plan and procedures are uh, before an incident occurs. So definitely some pre-planning in terms of uh, what incidents are you going to investigate, um, how are you going to investigate them, because not every incident uh, receives the same level of investigation. So, for example, if you have a near miss, that might be a quick uh, conversation uh, with uh, the person who reported the near miss uh, versus if you have, you know, someone who gets uh, severely injured, you're going to do a full-blown incident investigation um, and you're going to involve multiple parties. So, really good to know what incidents you're going to investigate and at what level. And then the other part of pre-planning is making sure you have an incident investigation kit. Um, so making sure that when you do have to go to the scene and investigate um, an incident, you have your procedures, uh, you have your documentation, you have a camera, you have, you know, caution tape, really whatever you might need, a list of contacts, a checklist, whatever you might need to actually conduct that incident investigation. Um, so that's really important uh, before you actually get to the investigation. And then one more piece on the pre-planning. Um, you want to actually have trained uh, folks who are responding to incidents to have the appropriate training uh, for incident investigation. So really lots to do before you even have an incident. Um, once an investigation happens, uh, really the very first thing uh, you do before you investigate is you make sure that uh, if you do have injured or hurt employees or contractors, that they uh, receive the appropriate attention. Um, obviously, that sounds like common sense, but just, you know, that is really the number one priority. And then you want to make sure, uh, again, that the scene itself, after you've taken care of the employees or contractors, you want to make sure that the area itself is safe before you begin your investigation. So uh, let's, uh, you've done your pre-planning, you have your kit, you have your plan and procedures, you've been trained, uh, you've taken care of the injured or hurt employees, um, and you've made sure the area is safe. Now you actually begin the incident investigation. Uh, we've divided it up into four steps, um, and these are pretty common uh, steps you see with incident investigation procedures. Um, the first is preserving and documenting the scene. Uh, the second is collecting information. Um, the third and fourth generally happen after uh, you leave the scene. Um, you look up root causes and you implement uh, corrective actions to make sure the incident doesn't happen again. And I'm going to walk through each of these steps in a little bit more detail. So when you uh, preserve the scene, uh, you just want to make sure you examine any equipment or safety devices in use. You want to note positions of machine guards and controls. Um, and you want to take photos and you want to document uh, findings using the incident forms. A lot of times, too, you might actually seal off the scene uh, so you can do the uh, investigation and make sure that no one else um, is going in there. So um, a lot to do there. Um, 
really, I always like to say, take a lot of photos, uh, cannot hurt, and really uh, can tell, can really uh, help tell the story. Up. Uh, um, you also uh, want to interview any witnesses. Uh, you want to do that as soon as possible uh, because they're going to have more details and memory um, about uh, the scene. You want to uh, use open-ended questions to interview uh, the witnesses. Um, it is good, uh, best practice to interview the witnesses individually. Um, that way uh, you're getting uh, their version um, and you're not having uh, witnesses uh, influence each other or their memories. Um, and ideally you conduct the interviews at the scene of the incident. Um, ideally you do it as soon as possible at the scene of the, of the, of the incident. It gives you a much better understanding of what happened. Um, when you do uh, actually start completing uh, your data points uh, for incidents, there's a lot of data uh, that we see our customers collect with incident investigation. And usually uh, we see the more severe and serious uh, the incident is, uh, they're gonna collect more incident information. Uh, so again, if it's uh, a near miss, they may not have as much detail, but certainly a more serious incident, there's gonna be a lot of information. Uh, most of the time, uh, even for a minor incident, they are going to uh, include information about the description of the incident, the location, and we've seen location done on numerous ways. Uh, sometimes it could be a sub-location within a building. Uh, we see a lot of our clients uh, use GPS locations, uh, which is really um, uh, gives you a lot of good analytics. If you have a spread out workforce or you have vehicles, um, you can really see exactly where your incidents are occurring, uh, the conditions of the scene, how the incident occurred, um, and then information about the employee. And this can also help you as you do your trend analysis and your root cause analysis. Um, so once you uh, collect those data points, and we've also seen a lot of other data points, uh, you know, and it, if you look at an incident in OSHA recordable, there's a lot of information about what the employee was doing. Um, you know, what they worked. Uh, we've seen things with safe and unsafe behaviors, uh, documenting the PPE. Uh, these are all um, other fields we see when you conduct an incident investigation. Uh, once you uh, have got uh, a lot of the information done, uh, you want to do a root cause analysis. Um, and this is understanding the underlying or systematic causes of an incident. It's really trying to answer the questions, what happened? How did it happen? why it happened, and what needs to be corrected. Um, and this is an example of a root cause analysis, and this is a very, very simple one, uh, but you can see um, it's looking at uh, just a slip and, and fit, a slip and fall, and you know, you're looking at the immediate cause, the floor was wet, the primary cause, it was not properly dried, a secondary cause, um, and the root cause. So lots of different ways to do root cause analysis, um, as you see here, there's a lot of different tools. There's brainstorming, there's checklists, there's um, logic event trees, there's timelines, there's, se there's sequence diagrams, there's causal factor determination. Um, all of these are tools that safety professionals use uh, when they're conducting that root cause analysis when they do an incident investigation. Um, you know, and there's different, uh, there's uh, the five whys. Um, which is sort of asking why every single time to help you get at your root cause. Uh, once uh, another way to, to look at after you've conducted your incident investigation and trying to understand um, root cause is to look at some common incident metrics uh, that we see. So obviously looking at incidents by root cause is, is a metric we see a lot. Uh, we see a lot of our customers use uh, the OSHA metric. Uh, that is their total case incident rate and the days away restricted transfer rate to evaluate how they're doing with OSHA recordables. Um, there's the average time lag in reporting incidents, how quickly are incident reporting uh, by time of day. These are all some common um, incident metrics we see after uh, folks have done their incident investigation. And again, the uh, goal is to look at these metrics to help you prevent these incidents from happening again. Um, and I didn't really touch a lot on corrective actions, but obviously, um, as you do your root cause analysis, is one of the four, the last step 
of after you've done your root cause analysis is to actually develop corrective action plans so you can figure out uh, what you need to do to prevent uh, the incidents uh, from reoccurring or happening again. Um, how can a software help you with your incident investigation? Um, there's a lot of data entry, um, especially if you are doing a detailed incident investigation. Um, and software can really help you uh, make sure you've got good quality data. Uh, you're capturing data consistently each time. Um, it can even link and track your corrective actions and follow up. Um, and it can uh, certainly, another piece is it can um, protect the integrity of the data. So uh, we'll talk about this when we show you our software, but uh, you want if you want people to sign off on the data or make sure no one edits the data, there's all sorts of ability to do that uh, within software as well. Um, and then, of course, the ability to look at the metrics and summary report. Uh, we will take you into uh, Industry Safe, and Josh will show you how folks use our system to conduct incidents. Uh, but just a couple of different components we have with the software is we have our incident module, of course, and that's where you can do the root. Uh, that's where you'll do your incident investigation. We also have a whole bunch of other tools that help with incident investigation. There's a mobile app if you wanted mobile data entry. There's our dashboards. And there's really all sorts of uh, reports, um, both in incidents and corrective actions that you can run uh, to do your incident investigation. There's also a lot of workflow um, that folks use when they conduct an incident investigation and software can help with. So, you know, most organizations do have a particular workflow. Um, that varies for their organization of how they want uh, incidents conducted. And that goes back to the incident investigation procedures I mentioned at the beginning, to make sure you have those procedures set so you understand who, invest, who investigates the incident. A lot of times it's a team of people. Uh, who's writing a report? Who's filling out what data? At what point does uh, the report, uh, at what point are you notifying people of an incident? At what point are you closing out and completing the incident? Uh, these are all different workflows uh, that you want to have your procedures for that you can use Industry Safe uh, to help you with. Um, and some of that workflow is done through email notifications and alerts. I mentioned taking photographs as you do your incident investigation. Uh, so with Industry Safe, you can store all your documents and photos. And of course, um, you can export and query data. And then again, I mentioned, um, and Josh will touch upon the, the need to have um, e-signatures for approval and sign off. Um, so with that, um, I'm gonna turn it over. There is a whole series of incident management resources uh, we have available. We have some great guides on um, incident reporting. Um, and uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Josh. And uh, please uh, keep your questions, uh, please uh, uh, submit your questions and we will have a time for a Q and A. So Josh, if you wanna take it away. Okay, great, thank you, Claire. What a plethora of information, give me one second. Uh, a lot of good stuff in there. But uh, bear with me as I get the all situated. And, um, as I look through the attendees list, I, I want to thank anybody taking a little bit out of your time today, a little bit out of your busy schedules, I'm sure. Um, got a lot to cover, a lot of components just in the one module that is incident itself, but I'll do what I can here. I got uh, about 40 minutes or so. I, I definitely will jam in as much as I can that, that Claire highlighted. Uh, but to my point, thank you all. Uh, great attendees list, some familiar names that I maybe have worked with you. Uh, but it's also nice to potentially see They're on the, uh, 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 as well. Um, so, sorry about a little background noise I got taken care of. Um, so with that, um, anybody who may be an existing industry safe client, please uh, reach out to us if anything in here, you're, uh, I'm gonna try to highlight some new stuff that, that maybe you haven't seen yet. Uh, but uh, of course, please reach out to us, uh, your, your account manager to support, we'll get you relayed. But for folks that may just be partaking in this uh, webinar as an opportunity to see uh, ways that you could either improve your incident uh, policies and procedures, or maybe you're looking at software, uh, it's a good time to maybe break away from some of the, 
paper trail, Excel spreadsheets uh, to get, we get a lot of folks coming to us. So my point is uh, industrysafe.com, www.industrysafe.com, what you see on your screen now, um, will get you to our marketing website, a great amount of information. More importantly, you can find ways to get in contact with our sales team and maybe explore some of these things that I'll show you one-on-one -on -one with them for your needs. So please take advantage of that. A lot of numbers and ways that you can get a hold of us. I'm logging into a really a demo environment. I already got myself situated on this other tab here. And uh, this is where I'm going to really walk you through this. I am, uh, as you can kind of see across the top, I, you know, I have full access. All of the modules are turned on and enabled in this environment. Uh, but, you know, be mindful if you're joining us. We, we, we even recommend start small. Uh, if it just is instance, we can help get you set up and you can expand and grow uh, as you see fit. So, I know there's a lot up there. I am going to really keep it focused in a couple of areas, though. Obviously, incidents. I'm going to touch on corrective actions. I saw a couple of questions that asked about closing of the loop, um, so that would be a good thing. I think I can show you that through corrective actions. But you know, you're pumping data into a system for a reason. Uh, dashboards and reports. I'd like to finish up a little bit on that. So let's dive right in. Um, I want to start. Unfortunately, the the technology, the tool that we're using to present here doesn't allow for for my phone to uh, show you the mobile app. But I do wanna start that um, we do have a mobile app available for instance and a few of our other modules. And that has been a great way uh, for folks to cut down on um, uh, you know, being in the field. As Claire said, you wanna get to that accident and, and start gathering as much information as possible. Everyone has their phone on their hip nowadays. And as long as you have that site set up and configured that, that mob, mobile app component turned on it's it's not an extra charge nothing like that you just need to have the module uh we'd turn it on and, and that has been a great way um to get those at that initial blast of information that who the what the where um unfortunately I cannot demo that today but i do like to remind folks um that it is out there and in, in, in another option uh not just through you know my laptop but you can be in the field and really get some great information while you're investigating this or just getting the initial data in there so let me start showing you some stuff uh, our modules are listed across the top and uh, you can obviously click on a respected module and most of the modules are going to take you to a summary screen and that summary screen is really housing all of the existing data that has come through the system and that could have been through the mobile app we have options that we've seen um, clients taking advantage of, especially given the current pandemic, which we call public web forms, um, and a plethora of those. There, there's one for incidents and other modules as well, but no matter how you get them in, if you're logged in to the mobile app, you're using the public portal, uh, or you're a user like me right now is, in my experience, um, any existing records are housed here. And you know, there's some pre-canned um, summary screen filters I'm just looking at the last 30 days and you can see, you know, it looks like Claire's been involved. I can hover over these incidents. Let me just click on an existing record. So you can kind of see if we were 80, 90% of the way done with this incident, you may have some photos already being attached. Uh, in this example, I have an open corrective action. Let me make this a little bigger. You guys I realize you might be squinting. <laughs> Zoom that in for you guys. Sorry about that. Um, you can see here now, hopefully, you might have to kill your eyeballs, but there's a corrective action that um, this incident stemmed from uh, really some loose cabling. So we need to get that fixed up. Um, and um, obviously you see that the investigation is a status of in progress, but um, you can also very quickly, I, I do wanna highlight it, 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 this, the way that we've designed our incident input forms is that you can get that who, what, where very, very quickly, uh, literally, uh, I'll show you in, in probably less than three minutes. But the majority and really where a lot of that extra information comes from is the investigation. But the system is designed to help uh, start with email notifications once you get that first info in there and then additional workflows as you're manipulating the status to uh, inform key people in your organization. So let's, let's take a use case. Claire is one of my employees. Um, she is up on a roof she happens to be working on and gets injured. So I'm logging into Industry Safe now. I'm just gonna take you through one by one here. Very simple. Your uh, Industry Safe uh, site or Vector EHS site is gonna be linked up to your employee database. So I know her last name is Epstein. It starts to search for all the Epsteins. Once I locate her, it knows that she works out of our Tampa uh, office and actually autofills pretty much a lot of that left-hand side. I can even, you saw in Claire's, um, uh, PowerPoint, we do a little bit with GPS, and then in turn, 
that can uh, be translated to a map. Now, I sit in Philadelphia, so you see it's starting to send me in Philly. But of course, if I was in Tampa, um, I could, you know, let let it, uh, you know, beam me up, Scotty, and, and slap in the address of, of where this incident might have occurred. And maybe, maybe in Claire's example, she did come to Philly and, and she was working there, even though she's headquartered in Tampa. On the right-hand side, again, crucial data points on this first form, the date, the time, and then the incident type completely configurable uh, by the client, meaning you, uh, you and your safety team help to find this list. This is what we give you out of the box. It comments on a lot of what you saw in Claire's system. We can capture really any variety or combination of incident types. And uh, that that is because of uh, Vector EHS's configurability. Meaning if you wanted to, when we have done this, given the current pandemic, added a COVID-19 exposure, for example, as an incident type, and then you do a full-fledged investigation around that. Um, those are that's one example of you know things that our current client base is facing and, and have been able to transform industry safe. I'm going to run with the idea of an employee injury, but I touch a lot about any combination, any combination of incidents. Well, you, you're probably like, well, I can't multi-select this, Josh. What's going on? Don't worry. If you take a look at the nature of these four questions, they're actually going to help cover really any combinations of incidents that you can have. Vehicles being involved, uh, you know, an employee directly supervised contractor injured, non-employee injuries, like Claire alluded to, our transit clients, you might have passenger injuries and they utilize industry safe to keep track of that, and then property damage involved. And, and the way these fields work is by answering yes to any of the questions, the investigation is smart enough to expose or hide those questions. So it will not, you'll see when I move on to the investigation in saying no to vehicle, I will not be asked any vehicle questions because we have told the system that there's no need to bother whoever's doing this investigation. Whereas if I were to toggle that to yes, I could use industry safe asset database where I can pull from my, my fleet of vehicles, even tagging the vehicle that uh, may have been involved if, if you know Claire was driving a vehicle in, in my use case. So be mindful of that. Uh, again, for time's sake, I just want to run through a lot of what Claire talked about, an employee injury. That, that's a big one, especially with our uh, OSHA record keeping capabilities within the software. Um, so again, uh, other than me talking through it, probably getting <laughs> adding to getting through this form, I would put in some form of initial incident description. Um, uh, you know, in this example, removing scaffolding and uh, she tripped over um, tripping over loose cables, uh, breaking breaking an arm, right? Keep it short, sweet, what you know at the time, and that quickly. Um, I have now, by clicking continue, an email will be sent out of industry safe. We are given what we call a you know an incident number, fiscal year 20, and this happens to be the 45th incident for this site. Um, so we have now started that initial form of communication, and the idea would be, if you're ready, great, you can dive in to the incident investigation form, uh, or if that gets handed off to a different team of people, everything on that initial incident form, just to remind you, should allow that person to get started uh, with that investigation. And you can obviously make updates to that. And then of course, those updates get then transferred to the incident investigation form. Now, this is where the detail, a lot of that additional information starts to get populated. I won't dwell on every single field. I'm just going to try to highlight some of the, the important pieces that you saw in Claire's deck. So, uh, we again, the, the you know that initial form that you saw, we, we carry all that information over, so you don't need to be jumping back and forth to see you know the time or, or what the you know what the description was. But again, this this is now where you're expanding upon. So you are getting into things like who maybe it was reported to, uh, the shift that they may have been working, um, more details on the location. So we know this is at you know in Philadelphia, 12th and Arch Street. It was on the west uh, west wing roof or whatever you designate that area the roof as. You can get into weather. Uh, you know, of course, weather can impact an incident. Lighting, you know, insufficient lighting. Is it vehicle related? Uh, what, what, what are you experiencing? Witness information is huge. The way we work is, is, you know, you have the ability to obviously talk to as many people as you want. And the, the various use cases of as much or as little information about a witness that you capture is really up to you as the client. Some just need a name and, um, 
and then their statement. Uh, but you can see we can allow you to get more in depth. And of course, adding as many witnesses as you see fit. And what we even show you down at the bottom, the ability to upload photos, a lot of times you may just upload a handwritten witness statement. In our employee injury section, you're really gonna see a lot of the OSHA compliance that Industry Safe will allow you to keep, um, even marking incidents as OSHA recordable or OSHA reportable. Uh, we have a, another great webinar we did earlier in the year on that topic alone, so I will not dwell on it, but um, it is allowing you to you know, highlight a lot of that you know, important OSHA uh, components as well. So, you know, medical treatment received, what kind of initial treatment are you are you seeing? You know, what body parts are, are being affected? In this example, I think I said Claire broke her, you know, arm. So now we can get into, oh, it was her lower arm. It was her lower left arm. Um, what was the nature of the injury? Well, now we've learned that it truly was a fracture. Um, and we know that it was a slip, trip and fall injury. And she fell on the same level. So again, I know I'm breezing through these drop downs. If you are familiar with any of the, the workers' compensation standards, we do uh, mirror a lot of that, at least to get you started. Uh, but just please note that all of these drop downs that I am clicking on, um, you know, the source of her injury were, were ropes. So that's tools, equipment. Um, you know, all of these are configurable by you as the, the client. Um, of course, the record keeping was up there at the right, but. I wanted to get into this area of, of our form, which we call record keeping and reporting, but Claire really, you know, she had a whole deck, the who, the what, the where, the why. That then translates to things that OSHA are directly asking you. But if you take a look here, I haven't typed anything into this section. I'm not trying to uh, pull fast one on you guys, uh, but you, you've kind of answered a lot of that up above. Uh, you know, where did the incident occur? I put in a detailed location. So it pulled down my West Wing roof. Um, it doesn't know what the employee was doing right before the incident occurred, so we would, you know, type out the job, uh, you know, uh, hanging scaffolding or whatever that Claire was doing. Um, but we do know how the injury occurred. I had an incident description. I know what was arm, harmed. We we found out that it was a fracture of her lower left arm on the left side, so the, all, that gets populated. Um, what object hurt them? Again, we're just populating and pulling down data points that I've already recycled. Of course, you can overwrite these things uh, if you don't, you know like the way that they autofill, but again, it, it is a time saver. We get into employee work behavior. This is where really a lot of times we're focusing on the PCE that was supposed to be worn and maybe was not being worn. That's actually a question that we asked down here. The idea is that you'd be checking off, you know, they should be wearing those four items up above. We found out that she was not, I don't know, I guess rubber gloves wouldn't really change her breaking her arm, but she wasn't wearing her rubber gloves. And uh, we do want to call that out as, as, you know, perhaps a potential training tool down the road. Lastly, the big kicker of an investigation, again, this, this area and this form, as I've seen in my experience, you, you do have your safety professionals primarily working on those key components I just talked about. Of course, other folks can contribute to this document. And I'm about to show you uh, ways that you can inform them or even have them sign off on what they've done. Um, but the idea of this form, you, you really would be having your safety uh, managers, expertise, coordinators, whatever they are, helping contribute to the data that's populated here. Claire spent a decent amount on the root cause of the incident. I've come across so many variations of root cause in, in my tenure. And uh, we really have been able to fit almost any any variation of that. Uh, maybe not as the as deep and complex as some of the the, the tap root systems can go. That that tree, those root systems can get rather deep, depending on uh, the, the the industry that you're in, et cetera. We we get it, but um, we have been able to even get um, a lot of that legwork started using the what we call causal fields, and then of course the driving root cause completely configurable guys um so we just try to get you started based on you know working over the years a, a a starting point to say this is what we typically see is captured but a lot of that root cause analysis we lean on you to make sure do you have one first okay this is how it could fit in industry safe the five whys for example i've had the example where i would just click this button we could change the field label and you then get five text boxes where you could go through your five why process. You can do is what you see here, where you literally can just click. You might have three or four primary causes. Again, these drop downs would be configurable and could be different. 
from cause to cause, uh, leading up into secondary contributing intermittent factors. Uh, we sometimes see, and then of course, you obviously have a one end root cause. So while we get you, you know, started, if that's something new to you, uh, I hear that a lot as well, where this is new to us. Uh, I would like to develop this, right? Coming from a safety director, for example, but um, we'll, we'll start with what you have and expand upon it. That's fine, but we've also been thrown, you know, a sophisticated root cause analysis program developed by our clients, and we've been able to fit them in. Now, um, I wanna talk a little bit about the workflow. You'll see over here, sorry about that, I hit the meant to hit remove. You'll see over here, report status. This is really where additional emails can be triggered as you might be handing this one incident off from one person to the next. So perhaps you may have three or four people touching this. Um, you know, again, if there was a vehicle involved, perhaps in your safety space, you have a, you know, fleet specialist who focuses just on those kind of assets and would contribute in his or her respected area. So as you need those handoffs, each one of these statuses can have email alerts associated to them. And as you move them, you know, work its way up to, you know, getting to me for ready for approval. All along that way, those folks can utilize our e-signature component recently added. Let me just hit save here. It will flag me of any fields that I've missed. Uh, which is fine it's still saving the record it's just saying you know administrators of your site want you to fill out these forms as well uh, but more importantly uh, down back in that additional feature section i can highlight our ad signature component so in that example of multiple hands touching this one incident i would have the ability to come in here and search for myself as a Purcelli. but more importantly i can sign off uh you know depending on the device you're using, I just used the mouse, but uh, I can then hit add. And of course, other folks, you, you don't have to be uh, linked up to the employee database. You could just be, you know, Bob, who uh, needs to see this record as well. So there, I just added Bob. He doesn't have an employee record associated. But again, the idea is, is as you're working through this, you train your workforce to please just sign off as you're manipulating statuses, whatever it may be. And then of course, all of those signatures are then housed at the bottom. And you can, of course, click in to add more, review those signatures. And then even in our printouts that you'll see, those signatures can be displayed as almost like a photo um, that you can attach. Before I pause for questions, while I am in this section on the note of photos, uh, you can attach files, Claire commented. We'll, we can up, really upload any type of computer file, audio, even video we can, we can handle. Um, but we, we see a lot of pictures. We see supplementary, supplementary Word documents, too. Like I said, you may have uh, a witness statement that um, they either handwrite and you scan in, uh, or you, you act, might have a form that you ask them to fill out, and that's what you want to upload. So you can see I'm just uploading a couple of photos here, but you can really, you know, Excel, PDF, Word documents, you name it. Uh, you can, of course, rename the images uh, if, if you'd like. And then, uh, of course, those will show up. And if they are pictures, you get hover overs and see those. And of course, clicking on them would allow you to see the full size image. Those will also display in this printout that I'll briefly show you. Uh, but before I do that, the corrective action. This would be kind of that closing of the loop. As you go through that investigation and you are pinpointing um, various or identifying various root causes, those typically are going to likely spur some kind of a corrective action. Something is broken and needs to be fixed. And we want to ensure that Claire tripping on those loose cables does not happen to me when I go up there or the next employee on that shift. And, and what are we gonna do about those cables? Is it is it improper training or just we do not have storage? This is the idea to fix what you found um, where appropriate in your root cause analysis. That's done through corrective actions. So it's back tied to the incident. You can see it creates a link. It auto fills. You see, I haven't done any typing. It auto filled a lot of information. It knew where the incident occurred. So assume the corrective action would stand there. You see it pulled over my 12th and arch. It knew the incident description. So here's what my recommendation would be, would be to, you know, zip tie or uh, you know, zip tie up the um, loose cables and then retrain on proper storage. Uh, if, uh, if not utilizing cable. So this could be a couple of different teams that will do this, but in this you know, one incident, um, I found out that we clearly have a problem with 
not tying up our cables, but we may need to retrain folks on where those cables go. To close the loop, each corrective action is given a responsible party. So in this example, I'm gonna designate it to a colleague of ours, Kaho Lee, he's the maintenance guy. Um, he's gonna take care of the zip ties. I give Kaho an estimated time frame. I will say he gets to start it today and he has until you know next Monday to get that done. Kaho will now get emails uh, once I save this, which I will do down here. Kaho will now get emails that he's been assigned this corrective action. And then of course he can log in or inform me when that corrective action is done by changing the status to complete. He is able to put in the date he completed it. Kaho is the man, he got it done literally in five seconds. Uh, zip tied loose cables, right? He would put in what he's done. He can even upload a photo, right? Showing me that, look, I did my piece. I swear I'm not fibbing you. And then to bring this all together, let's go back to the incident. What's nice, again, the link is already here. To paint that picture that I started with, this is, again, an example of an incident I just worked through in the last 25 minutes. Of course, skipping some of those crucial, crucial data points, but uh, the idea is that you kind of can see from start to finish, it, it all sits back here. And then inevitably, when you're ready, you have the ability to print off every all that work that you and your team have put into industry safe. Essentially can be documented in, in this way, it's one record all in, in, a, in a large PDF. So give this a second to generate. Now's a great time to just review any questions. But as I scroll through, you can see all the data points nicely laid out. More importantly, any of my photos, my signatures, and that history, right? Claire talked a lot about the accountability. Who's in there? Who's doing what? We'll keep history for you. You can see as the status changes and moves. Um, so that is my use case from start to finish. I got a little bit more I want to show, but Claire, any anything good out there you want me to maybe touch on? All right, I'll take the silence. Maybe I'll try to check myself. I know we got we got a couple of wicked storms here on the west or west coast. Maybe I want to be on the west coast <laughs> here on the east coast. So uh, I know I'm experiencing it here in Philly and, and Claire's a little further north. So um, I'm going to move forward then, given the time. Uh, I got maybe five or ten more minutes, and then I'll, I'll I'll do a wrap up here. I talked about obviously you're funneling this data into the system. Um, we obviously give you a couple of different options for you to get them out of the system. A big one that people like um, is our dashboards. Um, so I will start there. Talk to a little bit of that. Um, we give you a pre canned dashboard. The idea is you need to be funneling the data into the system, and then we can, you know, this stuff just is already there. All you need to do is add the panels that you want, and um, you can you can move these things around. You know, so if I wanted to slide this over here, uh, maybe if, if something wasn't uh, applicable to me, um, I could actually, you know, get rid of things if I want. Uh, as you see, a remove option. Uh, you can create your own tabs. Uh, so we call these tabs, right, like in a file folder. Uh, but as you see, there's an option there to add more. But I do want to call out that you can add additional panels. So that, that geocoding or GPS tracking is, is, is a pretty cool feature in the system. I know a lot of clients like to take advantage of it where they can. Um, so we have, you know, maps essentially that you don't have to do any work other than uh, put those incidents into the system and be sure you're tagging it to GPS. But that quickly, uh, I searched for location. I knew the name of it. Uh, you could search for map, as you see, but anything in the title or description will get you there. And um, I just there on the fly, um, give it a second, screw up, it'll be at the top left. Come on. There we go. Of course, I'm refreshing myself, but this panel will show up at the top left hand corner. And then you'd have that, that map that you saw really in Claire's slide. Uh, a lot of these panels do have drill down capabilities. So it's not just the graphic, right? There, there's a lot here. Uh, or if you're even looking at our hazards by type, there, there's, you know, what are the numbers that comprise those? You have drill down capabilities, sometimes even duplicate drill down capabilities. Uh, and then lastly, of course, there is export options uh, straight to PDF. But I often remind folks, that, you know, there are often snipping, snag it tools out there uh, if you wanted to, you know, crop just a specific panel and send it out that way, that, that's often something that we see as well.
we do get into some pretty great analytics. Again, this is all out of the box. I'll segue into our reports where you can expand. But if you recall, Claire talked about some, some interesting data points that even if you do have a system now, uh, or maybe you're using industry safe, you never realized that you could trend your incidents by these things. So um, of course, incidents by type is a big one, but check out some of this stuff. You know, you're putting date and time. Well, we can say, we can tell you which days are producing most of your incidents. We can tell you that there's something between eight and 10 every morning where a lot of our incidents get spit out. You can look at things by job title. That can often help drive training. Our back tie to vector solutions. There's tons and tons of great content out there. Well, if you see that that big, big, uh, you know, dark gray chunk is all of your, you know, uh, tech supervisors, well, maybe you should reevaluate the training that you're providing to them. Um, and, and this is a way that you can trend some of that information. Time with company, worker age, even particular shifts. But lastly, all of that causal information, you know, root cause, primary cause, the five whys, however you decide to capture that, that can then just out of the box uh, be turned into pipe down. Um, if you don't like those things, uh, lastly, the other area to get data out of the system or even create your own charts and graphs is our reports area. There's that storm. So in our reports area, uh, it is split up a report center, um, often called. Um, it is split up also into you know file folders or tabs. You have recent reports, so things that I've just worked on in the past couple of days. My reports, things that I have, per me as Josh Purcelli have created, uh, and that's all broken up into the modules. So you see, I've created a supervisor incident log. This one is actually even scheduled, and I can hover over that green calendar icon to see that schedule even re-trigger it if I want. You can share these reports with other users. So Claire, for example, she has shared a report called Claire's Incident Log with the rest of the user base, and I can actually go in and access that. But lastly, we give you all of these pre-canned reports in the standard reports area, and you can see not only do we give you a couple of different styles of reports, but specifically for incidents, we will also house all of your OSHA regulatory reports as well. So just to go to quickly show you one of these log reports, I mentioned I created a report that I scheduled. It's called the Supervisor Incidents Log. This is a way you're going to quickly see um, through this report tool, I was actually, I created a chart that you see right there called Incidents by Supervisor Name. It's a bar chart. Uh, I can expand it. I have the ability to then, if I want to, you know, do some more fancy things like edit these options and, and you know, Maybe I don't like the horizontal, I want to make them vertical. The idea is that you have the ability to go in, um, add different components and, and, and make your own charts and graphs. Of course, it takes a little bit of training and some know-how, but I have a team of people to help you do that. Um, and the idea is that from here, I can manipulate this little icon with the checkbox, bring it all together um, to show you and show you I'm not leg. Um, I've just created a instance by supervisor bar chart that in going back to my dashboards uh, will be available for me to either, again, give their users uh, through sharing my dashboard uh, options we can have working with my team uh, or, you know, just for my needs where I want to go. I want to see this updated every day. So um, with that, uh, I got 10 minutes or so left. Uh, I just want to see if maybe questions will point me in another direction. Um, I don't know, Claire, if I got you back, but I can go Yeah, I, I am back. There was some audio difficulty. Um, there were um, a, um, you know, a bunch of questions. Uh, some of them you did a great job answering. Uh, there was a question on whether Industry Safe does OSHA record keeping. Um, and it does, uh, there's a question, you know, checking that we could look at um, an employee's training data, uh, which I think um, you touched upon. Um, so I think I've answered a lot of them, um, but if there is uh, any other questions that you haven't, I haven't answered, uh, please uh, send them in uh, through the question feature. This is a great time uh, to get those questions answered. Um, there were some questions on pricing, and I recommend if folks are interested in learning more um, about uh, the product uh, to, you know, go to the Industry Safe web website um, and uh, sign up um, 
sign up there for a free demo and we'll be happy to to um to help you with that um there was maybe if you could go in a little bit more about how employee training data is added and accessed uh there's a little bit more detail uh i think question on 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 how to do that and it might be nice to talk about some of the six three features we're having with with that Yeah, sorry, I, I was on mute and, and sorry for those of you still watching my screen. I was trying to, as she was talking, touch on a few things, but just to sum it, for those of you, again, interested in maybe um, working with the sales team, get more info, information on, glad I kept you interested. Always nice to hear that as a presenter, uh, but industrysafe.com, www.industrysafe.com, check it out. You know, free demo link, we're going to ask for some information so we can get a hold of you, but those guys and gals are great. Um, and they'll, they'll help you step by step to ideally be work with that team to get, get your site set up. But Claire does bring up another great point. I thought that was one of the questions I saw as I was trying to comb that list, the training module. You know, we've had um, a training module within Vector EHS and Industry Safe. Uh, we now, of course, with with and, and even dabbled ourselves in some online content offerings. But of course, now uh, with everything, not just for, you know, our clientele, our com you know, commercial clientele, our construction, our manufacturing, engineering, but Claire alluded to public sector. So EMS, uh, you know, first responders, all that, and, and even education. We do have that. We do have existing industry safe clients that use, um, fall in those industries, but have been around with, with industry safe for a while. And to that question on, you know, of course we, we can, uh, we have many offerings for you to play those videos. Um, through our training module or even link up as you see uh, we have if you google or g suite right you have these dots and you can jump to google sheets or your google calendar just through you know these couple of clicks these are integrations into other vector offerings that um you know if you do take your content through you know another training player so to speak um we can work with you to jump quickly between the two systems um, and of course we're continuing to make that more seamless to our client base but through that process um, we you know we have a need to get data back from those systems uh, and and to the question on training uh, it's all back tied to the employee so of course this incident is in has an employee assigned right claire epstein and if you're either using our training module the training tracker uh, which is, you know, we're, we're pretty decent at that. But if even further, you're, you're taking advantage of the awesome uh, online content offerings that we have, either way, that information is still tied to an employee as well. So Claire Epstein is, is still, you know, with her employee ID, taking training that's being assigned to her in whatever fashion. And then in our investigation, we've always had uh, in that incident analysis section where you did that root cause. You may have not have seen it, but um, there is this employee training history over the last two years. And right now you see a big white space. That would be a no-no if you were in the safety world. This tells me that at least in industry safe, uh, Claire hasn't taken any training that, that industry safe is aware of. Um, and of course, that's just our demo, the demo environment that I'm in. Now, currently it would literally list forklift training, CPR, defensive driving, and, and, and any of the applicable courses. And the idea is that maybe if your root cause is people and it's, you know, instruction or, or requirements, or it's a training issue, what is great is you're here finding that out and you can then see if maybe you did perhaps miss training or there is retraining or new areas to be explored this area is being updated and will actually um, uh, work a lot like uh, one of these buttons and give you more flexibility if you are using one of our other vector external systems um, so there's more to come in our next release but even today um, clients have that back tie we're just making it more enhanced and uh, can actually read data from more areas if you want to think of it. So I hope that answers that question, but I'm, I'm happy to expand on that more. I think that was a good job. There were lots of questions coming in. Uh, so for folks who want to dig more deeper into how our incident software <coughs> works with other vector or LMS and training products, I recommend reaching out um, to your account manager or to the sales team, and we'll do a deep dive uh, with you and uh, figure figure out a solution. But thanks uh, so much, everyone, for the great great questions.
Awesome. Good stuff. Uh, I guess with that, Claire, I don't have too much more. I know we're hitting the top of the hour. I'll, I'll turn it back to you for a quick wrap up. Okay, great. I did want to say thank you everyone for attending. Uh, we will be recording this webinar. Um, so you will see the recording and there are lots of ways to find out more information. If you really want to dig deep into the app, I would recommend uh, the free demo. Um, and if uh, selecting that free demo link. Um, and if you want to just find more about incident investigation, uh, we have tons of blog articles and a nice download on how to conduct incident investigations and, and all of that is free. Um, so with that, uh, thank you everyone for attending. Um, and this now kind of concludes the webinar. Thanks everybody.